Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our SSE Electricity League final word show. Uh, we will be reviewing all the games from Friday night. Um, and I suppose we'll start at the game that we were both at ourselves, which was St. Pat's 1, Cork 0. Uh, overall, I thought, you know, from, I thought it was a perfect opening starting night in regards to the fans were brilliant. Um, the atmosphere was great. I, I mean, we put up obviously a video on Instagram with the flair and everything like that. I really feel that adds to the atmosphere. And don't care what people say, trying to get rid of it. That wouldn't be my ideal choice. I would keep it in there. But um, Pat's obviously a fairly new squad assembled. Uh, and then Cork, well, I suppose they had, had a lot of players lost, you could say, um, in the, during the winter break with Kieran Sadler and so on, and even. So, and Stephen Beattie, and some big names in the dressing room, you know. Uh, but for you, you know, first half, uh, how, how did you think the game went? Um, like, I was very, very impressed by the atmosphere, as you've mentioned. Um, there was 3,500 fans in there, according to reports, which is absolutely massive for a league game. It and it's, nice. it's great to see uh, so many fans involved. Um, great to see them come out and support the, the team when they open the match. Uh, Pat's fans were very, very loud. Uh, looked very very excited to to start the season off and start the season off well because they did in the first half they were the better side uh, throughout the game really but in the first half in particular they played really really impressively they kept the ball I thought Reece McCabe was phenomenal he sort of controlled the midfield he was very very good uh, very impressive on his debut as well so you know mm. um, Connor Clifford as well obviously Connor Clifford, his debut yeah. but he was very 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 effective uh, Mikey Drennan got, getting off the mark with a penalty as well uh, for me it was Stonewall penalty all day long we were obviously yeah. behind that goal. Yeah, um, we saw it pretty well because it looked pretty sloppy challenge. So it was a penalty. I uh, don't think even the Cork fans would have would have argued that, to be honest. So yeah, I think I think what Cork's biggest problem is, and a lot of their fans have come out and said it, is that they just can't finish. They just can't score goals, and that ultimately will will will, you know, if you're not scoring goals, and other teams are, sound like Michael Allen, but you're going to lose games if you're not scoring. You know, so. It's it's one of those things where you know it might, might take time, but they they've got um, Nash, Tilly, and Cummins all there who are striking options. So if one of them starts getting maybe a little bit of a run, they might be okay in that department. But for now, I think Cork fans are just a little bit worried because I think Dan Casey had another solid game at centre back again. And you know, looking around, I thought you know, Pat's to a man were brilliant. Uh, David Webster at the back. Uh, Brendan Clark, who you actually interviewed, I thought he brilliant. He made a brilliant save uh, towards the end of the game. Yeah, from yeah, a header over the bar. Brilliant. No, it was, it tipped it out. Uh, oh, that one as well. Yeah, but do you remember the one he tipped over the bar? That was like it looked like it was going to hit the top corner, and um, he just got a fingertip to it, and it went the second half. The, yeah, late yeah, in the second yeah. half. Yeah. Yeah. So like, as I say, Cork Cork did have chances, uh, but I just thought Pats were brilliant, and for me, Pats showed uh, a level of maturity, and. A level of you know, as as Keen said, we were interviewing doggedness that they weren't going to let this this game go. Whereas last season, I think they would have either drew that game or lost get that game. In my opinion, mm. um, so Harry Kenny's come in, he's got three points on the board. Pats fans would be delighted. So, you know, uh, I think results went their way as well, which we'll kind of get to in a little bit, but. Uh, do you do you see Pat's kind of going on a little bit of a run now, or what way do you see that? Um, it's like I said, if they can find form and consistency, then I see Pat's doing very well this season. They might even tip Cork for that third place spot. You know, they're looking to get into Europe, and for me, I don't see any reason why they can't. You know, I see them. I definitely see them challenging for a top three, at least top four spot this season. Which you know, again, the Pats of last season probably wouldn't have had a hope of doing. So I see them doing very well, and I'm, I'm not just saying that because I played well against Cork in the opening match, but. As I've said, they do need consistency, and if they find that consistency, then absolutely they can do well this season. Yeah. Well, another team who uh, kind of lacked a little bit of consistency last year, uh, Sligo played Dundalk was one one all. Um, but like people are already saying, oh, Dundalk are falling apart and all. But I think people do forget that they do they drew their first game with Bray last year, you know, um, and obviously Bray went on to no offense, but get relegated and stuff. So. I don't look at this as a as a big deal that they've drew their first game. No, it's you know, not, it's um, not. they took. I think they, I think they done too well in the first three games last year, from what from what I read. So if they can, if they can get their house in order, which I think they will, ultimately, I think 
they'll, they'll be flying again. Sean Murray got off the mark um, on his debut, so fair play to him. He seems to be a sign that you know a lot of people are raving about uh, since he's came back home to Ireland. So Sligo, great result for them. Bucko's first game as well, so I'm sure he'd be delighted. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. he's again like with, with Pats. Obviously, he left Pats to go to Sligo, but he's after assembling a new team there. And he wants to obviously get them, but you know it's not a bad, it's not a bad L first day going up to the champions and, and getting a one all draw, oh, taking the lead not. with them. Yeah, I was, um, I think it was was one nil to Sligo, wasn't it? When yeah, half just before half time. Yeah. So I saw that result. I was very, very surprised indeed at the fact that Dundalk had um, well, we're losing. So I thought I see Dundalk scoring twice in the second half, they'll win the game. I was actually surprised that Sligo held on and got a point. So fair play to them. A surprise result, but. Um, you know, sometimes the first game of the season, teams can be a bit sort of sloppy, a bit shaky after pre-season or whatever. I don't think Dundalk fans have to look into it too much. They're still definitely going to be up there at the end of the season. They will be challenging. So, a slip well, perhaps. They did, they did win against uh, Cork down in Cork as well. Exactly, yeah. Before yeah too, the so. President's Cup of Turners Cross and they played much better than Cork on the day. So, Dundalk, I wouldn't be too concerned about that at all. Like I think, again, Dundalk will be up there at the end of the season. It was probably just a blip. I say that now, they probably lose like six games or not. Now they want to because... Um, Again, Dundalk have quality, so uh, an error perhaps, but um, next game probably will get a win. So yeah, unless they they go on horrendous run as you said, but I, I I can't imagine. I'd say they'll bounce back this week. Yeah. They're uh, way to Finn Harps, so yeah, I can't see anything other than a Dundalk win. Sorry, Finn Harps fans, if you're watching. Yeah, um, no, I'd say they probably come away with three points as well. Yeah, so I mean that's it with in regards to Dundalk. I I, I still think. There's some new signings there as well. I think might kick on. Um, some players that they got in last year never really kicked on, like Chev Dukas who went to, to Waterford and stuff like that. So I think they've added better quality players like Sean Murray, obviously getting off the mark, which I imagine for him was important because people were saying, can he still do it? So no. I have not seen a lot of, of him to know much about him, but you know, over the course of the season, I'm sure I'll get to a lot of games and be able to get going go and see him. You know, yeah. Uh, Water, uh, Waterford and Shamrock Rovers. Obviously, Kevin Lynch, your mate, has got a peach of a free kick. My man, Kevin, yeah. yeah. Supposed to be, supposed to be another, a very good goal, yeah. That was another shocking, um, another shocking result. Yeah, that was or, or suppose, no, well, no, yeah. a shocking result, sorry. A shocking it result at half time. Because yeah. we had checked the score at half yeah. time and couldn't believe that you know, Waterford were up, that Sligo were up. And but again, it's, I talk about the fact that it is the first game of the season. Sometimes teams are looking to impress, get out there and get something like Pat's beating Cork, for example, as well. They're trying to impress the home fans. They want to put up a bit of a performance. Obviously, Sligo did it away. But, um, you know, Waterford were there looking to get off the mark and they won the loop at halftime. And I started thinking again, this, this could be a really surprising opening day. Now, it wasn't to be in the end, Rovers won it late on, but... You know, fair play to Waterford. It seemed to be a good battle, in fairness, and it took uh, Shamrock Rovers. You know, it was over ninety minutes, I think it was, till they finally scored. Yeah, I think so. Around that, anyway. So, yeah, exactly. So fair play to them all the same. Yeah, I think I think Rovers could be a surprise package this year, and if they can ultimately, as I said about them, get their house in order and kind of have all their players, because we we said it on our on our previous show, they've arguably got the best midf- midfield in in the league, and Robbie yeah. Benton. Got a horrible injury there the other night. I think he broke his fibula. So that, yeah. if he's out for the season, that's actually going to be a big loss for the dogs as loss. well. Yeah. Uh, so currently, at the moment, you probably say that Rovers then do have the best midfield in Jack Byrne, McAniff, Finn, and um, Watts as well. Yeah. Greg Balger, Dylan Watts, Brandon Kavanagh, all these players. You know, so. It's kind of frightening that they're midfield, but then you kind of it's look around good. the rest of the team. Ethan Boyle got the, mm. the, the winner. It was a bit of a yeah. I thought it was a bit of a lucky goal. Kind of crept in, but I mean, fair play to them. They got the result. That that's all that yeah. really matters. You know? That's all they care about. But it's, at the end of the day, um, they come away with the three points. And again, we go back to Wood the Rovers of last season and won that game. I'm not so sure to be honest. So um, fair play to them. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, that last season that was the race for uh, third place or the fourth place. I can't remember. They finished there in the end, didn't they? Because it was Waterford fourth. Yeah, so it was the race for yeah. the race for the European spot yeah. at the time until the 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 fact that Cork and Dundalk were in the cup. Then it gave an extra place to to Waterford to play in Europe. Then so the, all four teams were in Europe then. So that's what that was. The Cork views there. But um, again, I think it's a massive result for for Rovers because I think Waterford will become a very solid team throughout throughout the season. Yeah. Again, they've had to. 
trying to get new players in. They have Delaney in, they got Maxine Cogan, uh, JJ Looney, all these players who are quality, you know. So I think once they get a little bit of bed in the end time, I think I think they'll be very good as well. So I don't I think that three points could come just come the the, the end of the season, I think. But uh, they might look back on that result, yeah. But it's time to see if Rovers can kick on. They've got Derry on the Friday, isn't it? So another yeah. at home tough test enough. So um, which we'll be, we will be. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they can do there. Yeah. Um, then another game. I wouldn't say it was a shock, but Derry three UCD nil. Maybe the only shock is the score line and that UCD played so well last season in the first division. You might have thought, okay, yeah, Derry probably could have got the three points, but maybe by just a goal or even two. But three nil now is a bit of a. 3-0, you know, it's kind of, I, I wouldn't say, Flattering. I wouldn't say poor from UCD, but, you know, you might have expected it maybe a little bit better at the same time, you know, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, I'm not sure. They're really good, all the same, they brought in a good few players, but, you know. Well, what I want to do say is to the three UCD sports that travelled up to um, the Barney Bell Fair Play to you, I don't know why people post these pictures of three fans at a game, it doesn't look good for anyone's image, so. But anyway, fair play to the three guys for, for going up. Uh, from a Derry perspective, it was vital for them to get off the mark early. It'd be interesting to see what they bring to the table this year. If they can remain consistent and maybe push for a European spot, it'd be a great season for them. Yeah, well, again, let's see what they can do in Tallaght Stadium. You know, if they come away with any results there, even a point, you know, you've got to start looking at Derry thinking they could go on to do well this season, you know, because Rovers, is a, I'd say, is going to be a tough place to go to this year. So if they come away with anything, a point or three, you've got to look at Derry as possibly surprising a few. I, I think they will be a dark horse this year anyway. For so which now? For Europe. Oh, okay. Not, not, no, 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 no. no. Not, well, not you never know. You never well, know. they could surprise a few even more so, but um, definitely I think Derry they, can challenge. They'd be massively Europe. overachieving if they were going for the league. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, a European place... Um, may not be out of the question. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last of the bunch, Bowes 1 0 against Finn Harps. Dinny Corcoran doing what he does best, I suppose, finishing yeah. in the six yard box. I mean, again, Finn Harps going away to Bowes, it's a tough one for them coming up from the first division, but I don't think they did particularly poorly. 1 0, you know, it's not a massive result, is it, for Bowes at the same time? So Finn Harps probably gave them a bit of a contest. Yeah, well, I think I do think it's it's vital for Bowes to start getting wins off off the yeah, off the yeah. cup because they do have a you know a tough game against Rovers next Monday. Yeah, they're playing this they're playing this Friday as well. Um, so you know it'd be important for them to just try and keep momentum going. They were always, I suppose, favorite favorites against Finn Harps, and they were, in my opinion, never going to lose the game. Mm. So you know, again, that's another one where where you know their manager has had to rebuild everything again. They had this point ripped out of the team. And then uh, Keith Long had to go in there, basically, in the summer and just do what he could. They obviously lost Owen Stokes to, to Derry as well, where she got the score sheet as well for them. Uh, so it, I think he's going to have a really good season with them, actually. And I was surprised Bowes let him go, because he's been good. But I think what Bowes are going to try and do is get Ali Regba back on loan, who's a smashing player. Obviously, he was on, he was on loan at Leicester. For the, he was on loan, or sorry, not on loan, on trial with the under 23s yeah. and impressed. I don't know why the move fell through in the end, but there's talk from coming back on loan to Bose. But if he's on loan, tell me why in the comments. I don't know how he was a free agent, but yeah. Uh, yeah, if he comes back, he might be the answer to, to be up there to give Dinny Corcoran the extra bit of help because if he if Dinny missed a lot, the the first half of the season last year with injuries and stuff like that uh, so if, if he can keep a run of scoring goals because he is known to be kind of in that in instinctive in the six yard box of getting goals and you know it's proved it time and time again over the last two to three years so if he has a strike partner or a dance partner if you're rather to help him out chipping in with goals as well as keep Ward and so on they have Devani and stuff there as well but you know, I think Connor Levenston, I think he made his debut for them as well from, from Wolves. Another good player. So they have good players all around the park. Dara Leahy left back as well. So it's just, it's, a, it's for them, it's, it's how many goals they can score rather than concede, I think. Because, it's a big question, isn't it? Like, yeah, because yeah. they're losing their two solid centre-backs last season in Casey and um, Ian Morris. 
he's gone to Shells as manager. So you're you're looking at you know, can they I know they got the clean sheet in the end. Can they add more goals is is, is gonna be the big question for him. Because like if I think if Rovers go there now at the moment, Rovers are gonna win that all day long. But form was at the window when it comes to those games, yeah. Those, th- Especially those derby games. Yeah. But, but both have had the upper hand over Rovers for a long time now. They have, in fairness to them, yeah. So it should make for an interesting test. Sold that, out as well. Uh, yeah. Which is brilliant news. So, yeah, but uh, from a Finn Harps perspective, I think they need to really be trying to go into the likes of Bowes and trying to get wins or just avoid losses if they want to stay up this year. And I, like UCD, I just see the two of them struggling. I... I I know we used to have a good young team and ideally you'd like to see them do well. Otherwise, the players are just going to be plucked apart one by one yeah. and, 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 and taken to, you know, like Georgie Kelly went to Dundalk and so they, they will be plucked apart if if they don't link up well together, yeah. and, you know, get results. Because, again, but it might be down to how good Derry were as well. So, But um, games this week, obviously the first division is starting uh, back up again. Bray and Cabo, how do you see that going? Um, Bray have brought in a lot of good uh, players. They've definitely revamped their squads to the best of their ability. Um, I, I see them coming away with a win, to be honest. I know Camtelli are a difficult side to go away to at times, but I, I think Bray will, will get the three points there, to be honest. Mm. And Shells are obviously away to Galway there. But again, you speak about, you know, can, can they jail all the new players and stuff like that you know um we didn't look great against waterford in talk there a few weeks ago but i think they do have you know premier division quality players there at waterford that played that game i do think shells again they're adjusting to a new manager they're adjusting to having new players there and stuff like that so i think as well you've got to judge shells after about 10 games i'd say because they still yeah players there like Conan Byrne got injured and stuff like that still players there that you'd be looking and going can, um, what are they going to bring to the table which is the, a lot of them have to prove like the Oscar Brennans Dan Brennans and stuff like that they need to prove what they're going to bring to Shells you know so that's that's kind of how I feel about that and obviously another team who are going to be kind of there or they're about to draw it and then they're playing against Cove so again you know Tim Clancy didn't stay at Drogheda. He turned down shells. He, he didn't stay there for nothing. I think he, he feels like they probably should have got promoted last season. I think he's going to stick around and try and get them up this season as well. So I think they'll be definitely there or thereabouts. You know, and you know, I have a lot of friends actually from Drogheda, so I wouldn't mind actually seeing Drogheda do, do well, not better than shells. But then you'd be saying that about Bray. So, um, so there is that, that, that kind of way of looking at it. But... For me, I don't see anything other than a draw to win. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that, to be honest. I've well, got nothing else to add, really. I, I just see them getting three points. And maybe Cove will prove me wrong, but yeah, draw to three points for me. Yeah, and then the other games, there's uh, Limerick and Longford, which I think would be a good game. That's a good test, yeah. I think, obviously, Longford, like draw to, will be, or will have felt as though last season they probably could have went up as well. Or but there was some games where they gave some teams some hidings. I'm pretty sure they gave UCD a hiding uh, at one point last year, and they were going on a bit of a run, and then they had a bit of a tumble. So apparently they've, they've recruited really well in preseason. I don't know a whole lot about them, but Limerick will be looking to bounce back. Tommy Barrett's a good manager, and I think even a lot of people have come out and said it in his defence, like he was he was feeding off scraps and he was still getting results here and there last year. They were, had a bit of an issue with money and stuff like that. And I hope, because he's actually a nice guy and we've interviewed him a few times, so I just hope for his sake that they do okay and you will start off the season well. But um, then lastly, it's just Athlone and Wexford. I don't know a whole lot about both sides and you know, hopefully over the course of the season, I hope to get to a few games to see what see what they're all about. I don't know if you know a lot about them. but um, No, not particularly. I haven't seen Athlone play. I've never seen Wexford play either, and I don't know much about the business they've done. I think they're probably the more per- peripheral sides, peripheral sides in the um, in the division. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they'll do better than than what I'd expect. But I think that's probably more of a, a towards the bottom of the table clash, really. Yeah, the only thing I can say about Wexford is they're nice kits. They do have nice kits, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. So, Wexford fans, I hope you appreciate that little gesture. 
Anyway, uh, that's been our uh, final word show. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you ever would like to come on and join us in speaking about the league or whatever, feel free to drop us a message and come in on the show. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you're still watching. And more importantly, don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 5K now. And we would love for you guys to click that button if you haven't already. And we will speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.